Curtains are commonly seen in all interiors. So let's create a curtain in this tutorial using AutoCAD. Here I have a 4 paneled French window with a dimension of 200 by 180 centimeters. You are already aware of the procedure to create this window. If you need any clarifications on this window creation method, you can just refer to my respective tutorial on window creation. And on the top of this window, I have created a curtain road. And this curtain road I have made by creating a circle over here, then I have extruded the circle in this direction. Then I have made another circle and extruded in this direction. And I have copied the circle onto this side. And over here, I have this object which is made by creating a profile and I have revolved that profile about an axis. Now, I have kept these different objects in respective layers. I have already created a curtain and I am just going to throw that layer. I will just call that layer back. And this is exactly what you are going to create in this tutorial. But before we create the curtain, I would like to introduce a command in AutoCAD and its applications. The command is called EdSurf. So let's see what it is. The EdSurf is a surface fitting command in AutoCAD using which we can create a surface connecting four distinct and adjoining edges in space. The resulting surface is called a mesh. Now let's try this command. I'll start with a rectangle. I'll type REC for rectangle and I'll pick my first corner over here and the opposite corner over here. I'll click on the view cube to get an isometric view. Now you know that it's a single object because four edges will remain as a single object in a rectangle. Now I would like to split this into four as separate edges. So the easiest method is to explode it. So I'll give the command X for explode and I'll select this rectangle. Now you can see that it is split into four separate edges and these edges are having perfect end-to-end -end contact. So using these edges, I'm going to create an edge surf. That means a surface out of this boundaries. So I'll give edge surf command. Now it will ask you to pick the first edge, second edge, third edge and the fourth edge. Now you have made a surface. Let us change the visual styles to realistic and you can see that the software has applied a shade on this because of the presence of a surface. This surface is also called a mesh. When you look at the surface, you can see that it is made up of a number of faces. We have six faces running in the X or horizontal direction. Then we have another six faces running in the vertical or Y direction. These faces are controlled using surf tab 1 and surf tab 2 variables respectively. You are already familiar with these variables when we have used rev surf command in our previous exercise of creating a floor lamp. This is just a flat surface because it's made up of straight edges. Now I am going to increase the complexity of the surface a little more by replacing these straight edges with curvular edges. So I'll erase this mesh and I'm going to replace this existing classic interface with a 3D modeling ribbon interface. Now I would like to align the UCS on the front face. This is the front face. Okay. So I'll go to view tab and I'll click on the front. Now the UCS is aligned with the front face. I'll use polyline arcs to define my edges. So I'll select the polyline tool and I'll click on the start point here and I'll go to arc option and I'll click on the second point. I type the letter S to pick my second point. Now I'll click my end point here. Then I'll straight away go and click my end point of the arc here. Next, I'll use another polyline arc on this side. So I'll go to polyline again. And I'll click on the start point here and arc option, second point, I'll click here. Then this is the end point and I'll come back to click this point to finish the polyline arc. Now I'll create another arc on this face. So I must align the UCS with the left face. 
So I'll go to view tab and I'll click on the left. Okay, now I'll give polyline. So I'll go to home tab and select polyline tool and click over here. Then I'll go to arc option. Then second point, I'll select my second point here. Then I'll draw a simple arc over here. Then another polyline I'll create here. Okay, and then arc second point. This time I'll pick my second point here and the end point here. So I have got four edges which are separate and they are having perfect end to end contact. Now I'll erase these straight edges because I was using these edges as references. Now I'll go to surf tab one variable and I'll give a higher value that is 50. And I'll go to surf tab two and I'll give 50. Okay, so both these variables are having higher values now. So we'll have more number of faces and it will be a smooth mesh. Let's give edge surf command. This is the first edge, second edge, third edge and the fourth edge. Look at the beauty of the surface. From this, it's clear that you can create any surface in AutoCAD, however complex it be, if you can define that surface using four edges in space. Such surfaces can be created for terrain modeling. That means you can create any landscape using the theory of edge surf. I'm sure that by now you must be familiar with the edge surf command. So this is the right time to start our curtain modeling tutorial. Let's analyze this curtain first. It is basically a curvular split curtain and it has got a top half, a bottom half and a knot in between. The top half of the curtain is nothing but a mesh that is created out of four edges. We have a fit polyline as the first edge, then a line as a second edge, then the scaled down version of the same fit polyline on the bottom as a third edge and a spline curve as the fourth edge. And same is the case with the bottom half of the curtain. So let's see the procedure to create these edges. Let's go back to the drawing file without the curtains. I have incorporated this drawing file along with the video description of this video. You can just download this file and you can try this tutorial. But before I start off, I should create viewports. I'll click on the view tab and I'll select viewport configuration to vertical. Now my screen got subdivided into two vertical subscreens. Now I'm going to activate this viewport and I'll keep a top view there. So I'll go to view tab again and I'll select top from here. So I have a top view in this viewport. Now I'll activate this viewport and I'll keep a front view there. So I'll select front from here. Now I'll go to home tab, then I'll activate the curtain layer as a current layer because I want to keep my curtain in that layer. Okay, now I'll specify my first edge using a polyline. I'll go to polyline tool and you can start from the center. Okay, this is the extruded portion of the circle. Okay, you can click from the center. Then you can pick a number of uh, zigzag points like this. And you can go on picking points till you reach the mid of this window. So I'll click on somewhere over here. I can track this point and you can just pick a point somewhere over here. So this point is properly selected. Now I'll exit polyline command and I'm going to create a fit curve out of this polyline. So I'll go to P edit for polyline edit. Then I'll select this polyline. Then I have an option called fit over here. Just type the letter F or click on fit option. So this is a smooth curve passing through all the vertices of a polyline. You can just take a look of that polyline over here. This is where you have actually made this polyline. You can move this polyline in the Y direction in the front viewport through a distance of say six centimeters. So I'll move, I'll give move command and I'll select the polyline. I can give L to select the most recently drawn polyline, L for last. So you can see the polyline got highlighted here. And you can pick the base point somewhere over here, turn the ortho mode on by pressing the F8 key and simply type the value 6. 
Now it got moved in the y direction through distance of 6 units. I'll activate the top view port and I'll switch over to a south west isometric view. Now you can see the fit polyline which you have created. Now I have to create rest of the edges. But before I create the edge, I'll keep only the curtain layer as the active layer and I'll turn off rest of the layers. The easiest method to do that is by making use of the layer walk. So I'll click on the layer walk tool. In the layer walk dialog box, when you click on a particular layer, only the objects in that layer will get displayed. For example, when I click on the curtain layer, only the curtain layer is displayed. When you click on window frame layer, only the window frame will get displayed. Okay, now I would like to go to the curtain layer and I'll just give a close. So you will get a warning that you're going to turn off the rest of the items. Okay, I just want to do that. Click on continue. Now all the layers except the curtain layer is turned off. Now I'm going to create the copy of this particular edge at different locations. So I'll go to copy tool and I'll select this object and this is the base point. When I'm asked to select the second point, I'll give a distance of 110. So I'll type 110 and the next copy I'll keep at 190. So I'll give 190. Next I'll scale these edges at different scale factors. So I'll go to the scale tool and I'll select this bottom edge and I'll select this endpoint as the base point of scaling. Now I am asked to give a scale factor. I want the size to be reduced by half. So obviously the scale factor should be 0.5. Now the size of that object got reduced by half. For the middle edge, I want to reduce the size by 70%. So the scale factor should be 0.3. So I'll go to scale tool, select this edge. This is the base point of scaling and I'm asked to give the scale factor. I'll give 0.3. Now we will connect these endpoints using lines. So I'll go to line tool. This is the start point of this line and this is the end point of this line. Okay. And again, one more line. I'll just give an enter to repeat. This is a start point and this is the end point of that line. Now we have created three edges for the top half as well as for the bottom half of the curtain. Next, we have to create a fourth edge. The fourth edge is nothing but a spline. But before we create the spline, we have to align the UCS with the friend face. So I'll click on the view tab and I'll click on the friend in the pop-up list of the coordinate palette. So I'll click on the friend. Now I'll also keep my UCS origin onto this endpoint so that my UCS plane can be kept over here. So I'll click on the UCS origin icon and I'll keep my origin here. Now let me create this spline. So I'll go to home tab and I'll click on the spline tool and I'll start from the origin from here. I want to see this point over here. Just activate this viewport. You can see that point. And uh, the next point of the spline, you can pick somewhere over here. And in order to pick the last point, you can activate this. Okay. So you can see that point there properly. Just click there and just give an enter to go out of the spline command. Now you have to create a similar spline over here. So I'll go to spline tool again and I'll pick my start point over here. Then I'll activate this VPO to see that point there properly. Then you can pick the second point over here. And the next point, you can just activate this VPO and you can click this endpoint. Okay, they just give an enter to go out of the spline tool. Now we have got all the edges with which we can create an edge surfed mesh. But before we give edge surf command, we should make sure that the surf tab 1 and surf tab 2 variables are set at 50. I have already set the values of these two variables to 50. Now I'll go to edsurf command. This command is available in the mesh tab. We have an edsurf option over here. Just click on that. I'll click my first edge, second edge, third edge and the fourth edge. Now we have got a surface. The top half is created. Now we have to create the bottom half. So I'll erase the top half for the time being. Okay. And I'll apply the edge surf command once again. So I'll go to mesh and I'll select edge surf. First edge, second edge, third edge and the fourth edge. The bottom half is also created. Now this has to be restored. Okay. 
So just give oops command double OPS for oops. You know that oops will restore the most recently erased object. Now we have got that back. Let's change the visual style to realistic. Now you can see the meshes. Next we have to create a knot around this area. So I'll erase the mesh along with the edges in the top as well as in the bottom part. Now we have only uh, this edge left here. I'll activate this viewport and I'll generate a plan view or a top view here. So I'll just click on top here. Now the knot has to be created around this edge. For that, I'll go to home tab and click on the ellipse command. I'll select axis endpoint method. I'll create an ellipse so that it will completely surround this particular edge. So I'll pick this point as the first endpoint of the axis and this point as a second endpoint of the axis and I'll simply click to define the next axis. So I have made an ellipse. Now I'll create one more ellipse using the same ellipse option. So I'll go to axis endpoint method. I'll select my first endpoint of the axis here and I'll just type the value 6 when I'm asked to define the next endpoint and I'll simply pick a point somewhere over here to create the second ellipse. Now I'm going to apply the sweep tool. So click on sweep command and I'll select the profile to be swept and I'll just give an enter and select the path along which it is to be swept. So you have created the knot over here but it is underneath. It has to be risen to the top. So we will create a front view over here. So I'll go to view tab and I'll select a friend from here. Now I'll just give oops command to get the erased objects back. Uh, let us move this knot onto this level. So I'll go to move command and I'll select this object to be moved and this is the base point and I'll simply move it so that it will reach up to this level and I'll simply click to define the second point. So the knot is properly located. Now you can just call other layers which you have turned off. I'll go to layer palette. I'll click on this button to turn on all the layers. Now you can see everything. This is the right time to mirror the entire curtain onto the other side because it's a split curtain. So I'll go to modify mirror and I'll select the top mesh, the knot as well as the bottom mesh. And I'll select this as the first point on the axis of the mirroring and I'll turn the ortho on and select the second point just give an enter to get the mirror image. So that's it. Let us just orbit it and take a look. So this is how it will appear once you make it. You can also apply finishes to the curtain to make it appear more realistic. So in the process of making a curtain you have learned a very important command and its application in AutoCAD that is edge surf. You can just try out the various possibilities of this command and if you need any clarifications, you can just get back to me. All the best.